Welcome to College Prep Confidential, empowering your student with the elite tools they need to get accepted to their dream university. Discover test-taking blueprints from Ivy League professionals, financial aid secrets to get more money for school, and mindset tips for a better college future. Now, please welcome your host, Don Sevcik. Back in action for College Prep Confidential, episode 13, entitled Lord of the Flings. Let's kick this off with a question. What do 2,600 auto deaths, 300,000 auto injuries, record levels of stress, and rewiring your brain to mimic a drug addict all have in common? It's a sinister word, and I'll tell you about it in just a moment. But first, I have a question for you. The last time you ran errands, did research, worked on something, or had to perform a task? Here's the question. Did you have your cell phone with you? And did you have it on? Were you actively engaged with it? If you did, then you have something in common with the answer to the question I asked at the beginning of the episode. I'll give you a hint. How often do you check your phone check social media, or glance at the television while you're doing something. You're destroying your brain, by the way, and the culprit is the answer to the question at the beginning, which I'll repeat. What do 2,600 auto deaths, 300,000 auto injuries, record levels of stress, and rewiring your brain to mimic a drug addict all have in common? The answer is multitasking. In a University of Sussex study, researchers found multitasking, especially involving the use of media devices, could permanently alter your brain structure after a long period of usage. According to Earl Miller, a neuroscientist at MIT and one of the world's leading experts on human cognition, attention, and learning, He said, when we toggle between tasks, the process often feels seamless, but in reality, it requires a small series of shifts. Each shift, each small shift, leads to a cognitive cost. For example, each time you switch between responding to emails and writing an important paper, you're draining precious brain resources and energy. Miller's advice is to avoid multitasking because... It ruins productivity, causes mistakes, and impedes creative thought. You see, as humans, we have a very limited capacity for simultaneous thought. We can only hold a little bit of information at the mind at any single moment. Our fellow humans have a common misconception that multitasking is simple to switch between tasks. Ah, but nothing could be further from the truth. To reinforce Miller's point, another study conducted in the University of California discovered that it takes an average of 23 minutes and 15 seconds to refocus your brain on a task after an interruption. And that's just one interruption. Imagine, if you will, the amount of time that could go to waste from repetitive interruptions throughout the day. And so this begs the question, if you're rewiring your brain from all this multitasking on your phone and your iPad and other devices, are you a drug addict? Well, according to neuroscientist and New York Times bestselling author Daniel Levitin, multitasking creates a dopamine addiction feedback loop, effectively rewarding the brain for losing focus and for constantly searching for external stimulation. So when you get scatterbrained and search for your next high on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, etc., you are training your brain to become addicted, no different than a crackhead on the street. And just like crack addicts, each fix leads to the next. Your fix comes in the form of another distraction, another online notification, another plus one in your social media feed. You see, one distraction turns into multiple distractions, and you get strung out on a distraction binge. And one more thing, multitasking is making you dumber. A study conducted by the University of London found that participants who multitasked 
experience drops in IQ points down to the level average of an eight-year-old child. Some people dropped 15 points of IQ just by multitasking. Studies have shown that multitasking also hinders learning. In 2011, researchers Reynal Junko and Sheila R. Cotton published a study on the effects of multitasking on academic performance. And what they found was, on average, students who used Facebook and responded to texts while doing homework had a lower GPA in grades than those who didn't. It gets worse. Multitasking creates stress. Stress raises cortisol, and this causes anxiety. Continued. In our previous episode, we talked about brain drain. Multitasking takes it a bit further. Remember when I talked about how the brain is a gas tank and the glucose is the gasoline? Well, guess what? According to neuroscientist Daniel Levitin, multitasking is taxing on the brain and drains precious energy. When you ask the brain to shift attention from one activity to another, it causes the prefrontal cortex and striatum to burn up oxygenated glucose, remember the gasoline, the same fuel they need to stay on task. Levitin continues, and the kind of rapid continual shifting we do with multitasking causes the brain to burn through fuel so quickly that we feel exhausted and disoriented after even a short time. Translation, we've literally depleted the nutrients in our brain from multitasking. Let's continue. When you multitask, it's no different than when you cheat on a significant other. How, you ask? Well, you're diverting time away from the thing you should be doing to go jump to another seemingly more exciting thing. And when you do this, you damage the focus and mental capacity you had, no different than you damage your relationship. And this is why I call multitasking Lord of the Flings. No different than Barlaman Butterbur in the Lord of the Rings movie. Just look at the character description for Barlaman. Butterbur was the innkeeper of the Prancing Pony. Absent-minded and distracted, Butterbur is always in a rush, often forgetting what he is about. Now step back and think about that quote for a minute. Doesn't that sound like anybody you know? Doesn't that sound like a lot of people you know? Distracted, absent-minded, can't stay focused on one thing for more than eight seconds? You see, I mentioned cheating, and I call it Lord of the Flings, because a fling is known as jumping from one relationship to another without a care in the world. When you do this, you damage relationships. When you multitask, you crush the precious relationship you have with your brain. You turn it into a dopamine-addicted stress engine, which never is satisfied, and you never quite get anything done. In essence, when you're in a Lord of the Flings-type relationship, you're cheating on your future development. When you get scatterbrained, it's even worse. You cheat on yourself by having flings with other tasks. It's why the famous Latin writer Publius Cirrus said, to do two things at once is to do neither. Multitaskers like to blame time as the culprit. Time is to blame. I don't have enough time. There's not enough time in the day. Well, time, my friends, is not the problem. It's not a lack of time because we all have the same 24 hours in a day. Instead, it's a lack of focus and planning. Fear not, because there is light at the end of the tunnel. People get frustrated from multitasking and burnout. But don't blame yourselves. Like all habits, if you change the behavior trigger, you change the person. So here's the solution. Pick one thing to do and do nothing else. Focus on nothing else. Think about nothing else. If you're going to do something, do it. Take it all the way. Command your full brain power to one task until it's complete. And I'm reminded of Napoleon's famous quote on the matter. If you start to take Vienna, take Vienna. Take your one task to completion. Let nothing distract you or get in your way. 
so you can avoid squirrel brain. Now, what is squirrel brain? A doctor came up with this term. You may have seen it on cartoons where a person is engaged in thinking or conversation and they suddenly yell squirrel and get distracted. This is defined as to suddenly start talking or thinking about a completely new subject or to pursue a somewhat related or irrelevant course while neglecting the main subject. Who do you know that does this? I can name five people off the top of my head. Let's focus on the first tip to eliminate squirrel brain. Put down your phone. Turn off the TV. Disconnect from everything. If you're studying on your computer or filling out college applications, turn off other applications. Have one screen open for one task. Next, give yourself breaks. Your brain, like your body, needs breaks. And you do this using the Pomodoro technique, or something like it. Pomodoro is Italian for tomato, and they got this because they used to use a tomato timer. Set the timer for 25 minutes. During this 25 minutes, you can do nothing. Think about anything you want, but you cannot get out of your chair. No phones, no internet, nothing. All you can do is think about, daydream, sit at your desk, do nothing, stare off into space. Otherwise, the only choice you have left is to work on your one task. Now, when the timer rings, you can take a five-minute break. And then what you do is repeat this two, three, four more times. So 25 minutes, don't get out of your chair, can't do anything but your task, or stare off into space, and a five-minute break. Now, here comes the magic from the Pomodoro technique. What happens is you may daydream at first. You may stare off into space. But eventually, and I've tried this myself, you start to focus in on the one task because there's nothing left for you to do but focus. And if you can't go anywhere, you can't get up, you can't get distracted, pretty soon your brain locks in. And when it locks in, you get initial traction. And from this initial traction distractions start to melt away. Now, some college prep tasks may cause difficulty for you, even with the Pomodoro technique, or you may even want an expert to handle it for you. So here's what I got for you. Distraction is a constant temptation in our society. With the right help, you can overcome it. So I want to help you. Instead of dealing with multiple tasks for college prep, such as FAFSA forms, college essays, ACT, SAT exams, why not get some help? So you could focus on one thing at a time and avoid squirrel brain. How would it feel to have somebody hold your hand and walk you through step-by-step the college prep process? How would it feel to have somebody handle the busy work for you so you could get into the college of your dreams with maximum financial aid and minimum paperwork? If you're interested in eliminating college prep stress, then let's get you set up with a free college prep strategy session worth $250. This is an exclusive deal reserved only for podcast listeners. Now, I've reserved a spot for you, but if you want to pick it up, you got to call 800-234-2933 and give your name, your email, and your phone number. And we'll get you booked for the free college prep session. In this session, you'll discover shortcuts for college prep and the seven deadly mistakes to avoid when you're planning for college. And if you like what you hear and want even more help, we can discuss a full done-for-you college prep package. Again, that number is 800-234-2933 to claim your free college prep session worth $250. But a word of warning, be sure to book your, your time after hearing this because our experts have limited capacity and they've only reserved a few spots for our podcast listeners. I want to thank you again for listening and I will see you next week. That's all for this episode of College Prep Confidential. To discover how to give your student a better future by increasing financial aid, improving test scores, and reducing stress, visit our website at cpcshow.com. That's cpcshow.com.